गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द पेरेनियम सो वट आर द कॉम्पिटेंसीज फॉर योर सिलेबस दैट यू नो दैट दीज आर कॉम्पिटेंसी फोर्टी नाइन पॉइंट वन फोर्टी नाइन पॉइंट टू एंड थ्री सो दीज आर डिस्क्राइब एंड डेमोस्ट्रेट सुपरफिशियल एंड डीप पेरेनियल पाउचेज डिस्क्राइब एंड आइडेंटिफाई पेरेनियल बॉडी डिस्क्राइब एंड डेमोस्ट्रेट पेरेनियल मेम्ब्रेन इन मेल एंड फीमेल so today we are going to discuss the perineum so you can see the perineum in lithotomy position so what is the area which we are going to discuss so this is the perineum now what is this perineum basically it is a diamond shaped area between thighs occupied by external genitalia and orifice area is present below the pelvic diaphragm so this is the definition of perineum what are the boundaries of perineum so superficial boundaries anteriorly it is scrotum in males you can see in the diagram it is scrotum in males mons pubis in case of females the posterior boundaries these are buttocks in both males and females so these are the superficial boundaries of perineum now the deep boundaries are anteriorly it is arcuate pubic ligament you can see in the diagram this is the arcuate pubic ligament then there is tip of coccyx posteriorly then on each side you can see it is ischio pubic rami ischial tuberosity and sacro tuberous ligament area is divided by an imaginary line joining two ischial tuberosities so anteriorly that area is known as urogenital triangle and posteriorly it is known as anal triangle this urogenital triangle area is occupied by the external genitalia arrangement of the fascia in this area encloses two perineal pouches and in anal triangle it contains anal canal in the middle and ischio rectal fossae on each side so these are the two triangles this is urogenital triangle and this is anal triangle so it is just by divided by an imaginary line so so these are the ischial tuberosities they are just crossing it and dividing this diamond shaped perineum into two triangles now what is perineal body so it is called as the central tendon of perineum so the location is in the median plane in about 1.25 cm in front of anal margin at the junction of anal and urogenital triangle so in previous diagram i have discussed this is one urogenital triangle this is anal triangle and this is the perineal body which is lying at the junctional point or in the mid line so junctional point of urogenital and anal triangle so what is important regarding perineal body is the nine muscles converge and interlace in the body so these these are three unpaired muscles and three paired muscles so what are unpaired muscles these are external anal sphincter bulbo spongiosus and unstriped fibers of longitudinal coat of rectal ampulla so these are unpaired muscle what are the paired one these are superficial transverse perineae deep transverse perineae and levator ani muscle now what is the function of perineal body it is very important in females for the support of pelvic organs by maintaining the integrity of pelvic diaphragm so this is very important so if we see the applied aspect of this during parturition if parturition that is during the process of childbirth if perineal body tear happens it may result in prolapse of uterus urinary bladder ovaries and even rectum so in order to prevent the injury to perineal body during childbirth a perineal incision is given to widen the vaginal orifice so in that incision which is given during uh, parturition uh, that is known as the incision that incision is given uh, is called as episiotomy so this is uh, you can see the perineum in male and female so this is urogenital triangle in which the in case of female urethra and vaginal opening is lying and in anal triangle anus is there in both male and female but in case of male in urogenital triangle it is the urethral opening only so this is again the diagram showing that structure that is urogenital triangle and anal triangle so there is pubic symphysis ischio pubic rami ischial tuberosity and plane is just crossing at the lower end of the ischial tuberosity 
dividing this diamond shape for uh, structure into two triangles now we will discuss the urogenital region first so we will discuss it under these headings that is introduction of this region then different layers superficial and deep perineal pouches perineal membrane and applied aspect first is cutaneous innervation so it is supplied by these sets of nerve that is pudendal nerve ilioinguinal nerve genital branch of genitofemoral nerve perineal branch of posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh so first of all uh, when we dissect the urogenital regions what we come across with the skin then superficial fascia which has two parts that is superficial fatty and deep membranous layer which is known as colis fascia then deep fascia again it has two parts that is perineal membrane and endopelvic fascia so these are the structures we come across to reach the depth of the urogenital triangle so then what is colis fascia posteriorly it is attached to the posterior border of the perineal membrane you can see here posteriorly it is attached to the posterior margin of the perineal membrane then on each side it is attached to the pubic arch anteriorly it continues with the dartos layer of the scrotum then it continues with the superficial layer of penis then it continues with the fascia of scarpa of anterior abdominal wall so you can see here so this is again the diagram showing that is this uh, fascia colis fascia is attached here from the posterior margin of the perineal body coming downward just uh, enclosing the scrotum region then fascia of the penis continuing with the uh, fascia of the anterior abdominal wall now in this region we will discuss the superficial and deep perineal pouches before that i would like to discuss one case with you that a 13 year old boy taking part in bicycle race while on approaching a steep incline he stood up on his pedals and fell violently his perineum hitting the bar of the cycle the boy was not able to micturate in the hospital after several hours he had extensive swelling of his penis and scrotum the edema is also seen in the lower part of the abdomen but there was no swelling of the thigh so the diagnosis was made that was made that is of ruptured urethra so what the question which you, uh, should come in your mind while studying the anatomy what is the cause of extensive swelling of the penis and scrotum and swelling in the lower part of abdomen why there was no swelling in the thigh so then third question is where where urine spread in case of urethra is ruptured above the perineal membrane so these are the queries which should come in your mind while discussing the case so we'll we will clear these queries with the discussion of the topic so first is a triangular facial sheath called perineal membrane stretches across the urogenital triangle you can see so this is the perineal membrane which is just stretching across the uh, this triangle region then attached to the sides posterior margin is fused with perineal body anterior margin thickened to form the transverse perineal ligament so a small gap is present between arcuate pubic ligament and this membrane and this gap provides passage to the deep dorsal vein of penis the gap provide passage to deep dorsal vein of penis that is important now structure piercing the perineal membrane so these are the set of structures which pierces these membranes that you should know so i i'm not going to read this slide because these are very much clear to you so these are the structure which are piercing the perineal membrane in male and female this is very good question theory question you should know that what are the structure piercing the perineal membrane in both the sexes so this is the again diagram showing that different structures which are piercing it in case of male you can see dorsal artery of penis urethra artery to the bulb of penis opening of the duct of bulbo urethral gland then there are posterior scrotal vessel and nerve deep artery of penis so these are the structure and through this gap which is present anterior to this perineal ligament that is deep dorsal vein of penis and dorsal nerve of penis so this is in perineal membrane uh, in case of females so there are uh, the structure piercing it are dorsal artery of clitoris deep artery of clitoris urethra vagina artery to bulb of vestibule and posterior labial vessels and nerves and the gap which is present anterior to this perineal membrane 
is basically for the deep dorsal vein of clitoris and dorsal nerve of clitoris. So above the perineal membrane is sphincter urethra. you can see. So this is the perineal membrane here the sphincter urethra muscle is present. So next is deep to this muscle it is covered by thin fascia. So this is known as endopelvic fascia. So this is endopelvic fascia you can see. The fascia continues with the posterior edge of the perineal membrane, uh, perineal body and is attached to the sides of ischiopubic rami. You can see. So arrangement of the fascia in urogenital region divide the area into two pouches. So I have uh, shown you these two process. So this is one pouch, this is another pouch. So this is the deep perineal pouch, this is the superficial perineal pouch. So beneath this perineal membrane is superficial. Between endopelvic fascia and perineal membrane, this is the deep, uh, deep uh, perineal pouch. You can see superficial and deep perineal pouches. Now superficial perineal pouch, it is superiorly perineal membrane is there, inferiorly collis fascia is there, laterally conjoint ischiopubic rami is there. Anteriorly it is open, you can see this is open and continues with the anterior abdominal wall. This, this statement will definitely uh, clear your query from that clinical case. So it is open anteriorly. So these are the structures. This is a slide showing the structure within superficial uh, pouch or root of penis with bulb and crura of penis then superficial transverse perineal muscle, ducts of pulbo-urethral gland, urethra, and branches of internal pudendal artery and branches of pudendal nerve. So this slide is showing this. So this is again the section showing that is uh, in sagittal plane you can see the different structures which are present in the superficial perineal pouch. So this is the superficial perineal pouch in which the different structures are present. So these are the structure present in the superficial pouch of in case of females so root of clitoris with bulb of vestibule and crura of clitoris superficial transverse perineal muscle then greater vestibular gland branches of internal pudendal artery and pudendal nerve so this is the again diagram showing it so this is the sagittal section which is showing this now structures in the deep perineal pouch so definitely i will uh, no, I'm going to read all these things. You can know in male membranous urethra is there. So in female urethra and vagina is there. Other structure present in relation to it are the different muscles, glands and branches of internal frontal artery and frontal nerve. So this is the section. So this is the deep perineal pouch. In case of male, in case of females. So this is deep perineal pouch. Now the question was a 13 year old boy, so I am not going to read the statement again. So what our questions were, first was what is the cause of extensive swelling of the penis and scrotum and swelling in the lower part of abdomen. So the membranous part of urethra traverses the deep perineal pouch, thereafter it enters the bulb of penis in males which is present in superficial pouch. Once you know the different contents of superficial and deep perineal pouch, the query it will be solved. The membranous part of the urethra is the least distensible part of the male urethra. During accidental injury, it may get ruptured. If it is ruptured, the urine fill in the superficial perineal pouch. So that pouch is lying between collis fascia and perineal membrane. Thereafter, the extra vasation of urine into the scrotum, penis and anterior abdominal wall. As I have told you that superficial perineal pouch has communication with the anterior abdominal wall. It is open anteriorly. So you can see, so once the rupture of the urethra is happening here, so the extra vasation of urine, it happens and direction, in the direction of that uh, urine, you can see it is yellow cut structure which is shown in this diagram. Why there was no swelling in the thigh? But extra vasation of urine is prevented from entering the thigh due to firm attachment of superficial and deep fascia at Golden's line. You know it very well. So this is basically collis fascia, urine can go and fill this space running into anterior abdominal wall but it can't cross here because of the Holden's line. 
where urine spread in case so urethra is ruptured above the perineal membrane very simple if you know the anatomy of perineum in case urethra is ruptured above the perineal membrane the urine spreads upward into the extra peritoneal space of pelvis around urinary bladder and prostate you can see if it is ruptured over here so definitely it will spread in this portion so this is superficial perineal pouch you can see so if the rupture is happening above the perineal membrane it will enter into this peritoneal cavity extra peritoneal space of pelvis thank you